Kennedy. What made you go to Kennedy? And then that's where the luxurious career of number one in the city, Bosh, got game. Got it. Remember how Coach Math is like Kennedy days? Yo, they used to have over 40 players on the team work my way up. Like, nothing was going to be handed to me. So, so I had to work my way up. I remember it being on the news every week. They used to call me Mr. Bomb Bob. He's playing against, like, a lot of top names, like, you know, in the city. They had a bomb squad, pretty much. Like, you know, I'm about shit I met, nigga. Da, da, da. He's like, he's like, what? He's like, who are you? He's like, I've never heard of you. And that's when I was like, well, now you know. <clears throat> about shit I met. In the name, Salaam Alaikum, Salaam Alaikum, Welcome back to another episode of the Worldly Life Podcast. Live to you here in Saudi. We in the 28th day of Ramadan. Me and my wife came out here for Umrah, and obviously my brother Bosh, Mr. Bosh, aka number one in the city, aka Bosh got game, aka best in the tri-state area, aka NBA Bell, aka Big Bosh, aka what? Hold on, Bashiru, Gumbo, Kunku, Macho, Tonto, aka the names of all names. Mr. Bosh himself, thank you for having, thank you for coming out on my podcast. Appreciate you. By the way, this is my younger brother as well. We are considered, um, how you call it? Twins. Irish. I, I, Irish, Irish twins. twins. I'm not even older than this younger by a year. 11 months. 11 large. months. SubhanAllah. That's crazy. He's playing out here. Um, his season just ended. So we got the we got the we got the free crib on deck for real for mm-hmm. real he saved me a lot of money on my on my trip here to ramadan thanks for coming out first of all alhamdulillah we in a blessed breath month of ramadan alhamdulillah how's it going for you out here living in mecca first of all i want to start off by saying i am honored like you know so far you've been doing your thing i like you know where the video your podcast is going towards you're doing a very good job i salute you you know what I'm saying? I'm here to support, and I'm honored. Thanks for having me. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate you for coming, B. From the love. But so far, you know, it's been going good for me. I can't complain. Like, I'm very grateful, like, you know, to be able to play here in Saudi Arabia, the Mecca, the Holy Land. Now, this is the real Mecca. You feel me? The holiest land in the whole entire world. Like, you know, what, what more could you ask for, you know? I mean, this is what I dreamed of, like, you know, like playing professional basketball. And I'm here doing that, making money for it, you know. So I'm very grateful. I thank Allah, alhamdulillah. You know? How is your Ramadan going here? I'm here in Makkah so far. Ah, it's going good, alhamdulillah. Very peaceful. Like, you know, just uh, grinding and just getting close to Allah. You know, um, I got a chance to go perform Umrah so far. Like, wow. alhamdulillah, in this Ramadan. So Beautiful. may Allah accept it. So before we even tackle to the topic we want to talk about, since you're living here in Mecca, what you feel is like the difference between your Iman, your faith level, when you were playing overseas elsewhere and now playing overseas basketball here in Mecca? How do you feel that? How do you feel that affected your Iman? Or did it at all? No, nah, I definitely did. Like, you know, but um, I feel like sometimes, like, you know, it's not about places. Like, you know, but s- sometimes the environment can also help. Like, you know, you being surrounded by, like, you know, Muslims yes. to constantly remind you each and every day. Like, sometimes as Muslims, we all fail. Like, you know, we all slack. Right, like, right. you know, sometimes you could get off, you know, the wrong track. May right. Allah guide us towards the righteous path, you know. So um, it's been good, you know, just being here surrounded by, you know, Muslims every day. You know, um, so it was easier for me to kind of like, you know, focus, like, you know, my dean and get yeah. closer to Allah. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm very like grateful and I'm very fortunate to have a masjid that's like literally like right down the block, like, <laughs> like literally right right across the street from my crib. So you I walk there every day. I catch Fajr prayer every day, you know, so very grateful for that. Oh, that's beautiful. The level thing I wanted to mention, too. Um. Do you be seeing any, like, do you be seeing any temptation that makes you like, yo, I want to go? You get what I'm saying? Not at all, champ. <laughs> not at all. See, over here, it's not westernized at all. Like, you know, here is, like, sacred, you know, like, the number one holiest mm-hmm. place in the world, you know? So you're not going to see, like, you know, uh, 
girls coming outside not covered up or anything like that, like, you know? Or have naked yeah. or anything like that. Yeah, so. Honestly, you have the last expectation to one of you or something out here, for real, for real. And this is the merit and the blessings for living in a um, country, country, for sure. particularly in my country. Mm-hmm. So, now I'm the last bash. You grew up, your childhood started in that, all right? So you was born here in New York City. And then you could And then you came back when you were about six years old. Correct. Right? Yes, I was six turning seven, I remember. Okay. What are you in March? Matter of fact, I just remember when he came back. Oh my God, at that time, it was just, it was just three, it was just two of my brothers here and me. I was the youngest at the time living in New York. And then I heard I had so many brothers. And we speak on and said I'm on the phone. I remember one time I was coming back to school. And then Alhamdulillah, our relationship is beautiful. And we never went back since. But tell us about the stories of you uh, that you remember that you should tell us that we used to always want to hear. Like, we used to be <laughs> like, yo, boss, wow, tell us more stories. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so unlike others, like, you know, for me, I was very fortunate. I was blessed, like, you know, to to be able to have, like, you know, those memories of my childhood days when I was young, after, you know, a lot of people like forget a lot and they don't remember things from back in their childhood days when they was like three, four years old. I remember all those things. So I'm very blessed and I thank Allah for that. But um, yeah, growing up in uh, Ghana, it was definitely, it was different. Like, you know, and it's like, I don't know how to explain it. I feel like I, like over there, you grow up way faster. You know, because I was going out as a youngin when I was over there, when I was like three, four years old, five years old. Like, now I would go to the mosque on my own to Makaranta. Makaranta, by the way, is like Islamic school, you know. But um, it was different, you know, growing up over there. Like, you know, um, I grew up playing soccer. I used to love soccer. That was my first sport, my number one sport, you know. Right. Um, and then obviously when I came to New York, you know, uh, Basketball just took over. I mean, okay. So, obviously, like you said, you meant you mentioned some of things. Then you grew up fast. How about when you came in? Did you feel the same? You grown up fast, or you felt like okay, I feel like a dead man, like living here, like joint. Everything is like, what? Well, what you think? Yeah, and I mean for sure, like you know, um, it was a different transition, like you know, coming to New York and everything, and here, like you know, uh. Like it was a faster life. Yes. Like, you know, um back home, like, you know, uh we wasn't we didn't have everything, pretty much. Like, you know, we didn't have too many resources, too many places where you could go, like, you know, to the park or have fun. You have that. So we had to make things up. I remember like, you know, when I was younger, there was this uh little game and stuff we used to do for fun. So we used to put water in the fire. Like, you know, and then we get the stick. Mm-hmm. And then pretty much that's that's how we used to have fun. Like, you know, we pretend like, you know, we're riding or something like that, you know, in the mud and everything. That's what we used to do for fun. Like, you know, um, the reason why I mention this example is because many people that lives in the West think the standard of living and growing up has to be the way the West is. But when you go overseas, you see that's not the case. You see that many people are growing up fast over here because they're on their own. I mean, that is not giving them, um, it's not spoon feed them every single time. They are actually getting up, going out, going out. Mm-hmm. Even when I came out here, we went, we was going to visit, uh, uh, head up with uh, some of the first yeah, so. I see youngins that's like three, four years old hustling. My mm-hmm. mom sitting now, they over here trying to get their mother custom. It's not the same everywhere. So stop trying to put standards on everybody's standards according to. Oh, you're too old. You're too young. No, everywhere, everywhere of the demographic you're going to go to, people are going to be more mature here at this age. People are going to be more mature here. People are going to raise, be raised, grow up different over here. Some people are going to be slow of aging and matured over here. That's just based off of location. I just wanted to bring that to give our audience a little, a little, um, input on how people grow up in different areas. It's different. Yeah. Okay. So now you're here in New York City. Went to the airport. You got eye dogs for your first, the first time in your life. Oh, you didn't forget that, huh? <laughs> Pause. Hey, yo. Yo. Pause. Yo. No, did it. You heard none of that. Oh, man. 
Or, <laughs> nah, but yeah, I remember, man, yo, like, first time, like, you know, on that plane on my way here to New York, yeah. first time having a hot dog. Like, what? Yo, when I had that hot dog, I was like, yo, what is this? I was like, nah, this is made straight out of heaven, you know, from heaven. I'm like, nah, this is too good. Okay, now, okay, now you get to, now you in the Bronx. Or time, mm-hmm. to be exact. I grew up here my whole life. I already knew what I, I went through a lot before. You know, so we started going to school. I already knew that you were going to be a target because they never seen you before. And at that time, how Africans were revered oh, at that time was like, oh, yes, we got fresh meal over here. Mind you, this dude came back from Ghana already, already like that. Meaning, like, yo, he grew up with one of my brothers over there. He used to play fight. He knew how to fight. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. He knew how to fight. 100. And this dude had heart. So I just remember going to school. Some of the boys used to have to I even remember one time this kid asked me, yo, yo, he said, yo, can you fight? <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, man. <laughs> well, he actually decided to pick up the can you fight? Sex. I told them we're not gonna say no names, but I definitely remember who it was. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Guys, see for yourself. Mm-hmm. Try it. Thanks. He tried you like getting beat up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this was the marriage. Talk to us. So how was it growing up when you first came back from high like, school? Like, mm-hmm. come from where we come from. Yeah. So I heard you mention like you know I was already like that. You know before I came. You know obviously like you know. Growing up, having a lot of brothers, yeah. like, you know, coming from a big family, like, you know, all boys, too, mm-hmm. by the way. Like, you know, my mom had nine from boys, and I'm the youngest. Yeah. We have a younger brother, like, you know, from my dad's side. But, like, you know, growing up, you had to be tough. Like, you know, when I was younger, like, you know, my older brothers pushed me. Yeah. Like, you know, going down the line, everybody, like, they used to make me play fight all the time. They yes. used to wrestle with me, like, you know, so that made me tougher. Yeah. Like, you know, um... And uh, when I came here, like, you know, <laughs> it was different, like, you know, because um, when I came here, like, people used to pick on me all the time, like, you know, and people used to call me African booty scratcher. Yeah. So I didn't like that at all. Like, that dream used to piss me off, like, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, you know how it is, bro. Some people going to try you, yeah, you know what I'm true. saying? And shit. And sometimes you got to, you got to show them, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, I ain't sweet. You feel me? Like, <laughs> Yo, I ain't going to lie. I just remember being cool. Every time. Okay, yo, yo, bro, I had a fight. Yeah, bro, I had a fight. And I'm like, shit, what, this dude right here? Yo, this dude was fighting people. I was scared to fight. Yo, I ain't gonna lie, yo, I had too many fights, though. Like, yo, <laughs> what? This dude, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I had a lot of yeah. fights. And then when that, and then when that, too. For that, right, so now we get a transition from on the, how you call it, elementary school. Go to middle school, and it's still kind of the same, but it's probably more you more respected at this time. Mm-hmm. But it's still people thinking because like, there was groups at that time. So I just remember us going through a lot of. Honestly, I'm gonna be honest with you. I stopped getting picked on. Her. I got big. People was like, "Nah, I can't pick on. We all pick." Wrong thing to do. So. Unfortunately, you have to be able to play. So, but at the time, I remember when I first seen Crack Hand for the first time. He was like, you remember that time? Yeah, man. We walk into school. Mm-hmm. Um, I brought you a sneaker. I would get him the stuff because he didn't really know the currency at that time. So, I was mm-hmm. like, I just remember the first time you saw Crack Hand. This is you know, this what we grew up living at. And then you was eating the sneaker. And you saw the, you saw the Crack Hand. You threw away the sneaker. <laughs> so I got so. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, you know how violent oh, the sneaker at that time? <laughs> bro, I was so angry because I would have ate that out of that, bro. That was mm-hmm. luxury at that time to have that. We didn't have bread. We used to get about what? Uh, 50 cents, 50 cents. That's the shit at. So any type of food, anything type of snack. It was ugly back now. We're talking early 90s over here. You hear me? No, 
Big early 2000, 2000, matter of fact. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> nah, <laughs> why did you react like that? <laughs> like me, I'm, I don't know, man. Like, it was my first time seeing a, a crackhead, obviously. But um, the dude had, like, buggers and, like, mucus all over his face. Like, you know, and me, I don't like... I'm a, like, I don't like to see, like, anything that's nasty or something like that when I'm eating. Like, you know, so it just mess up my appetite. Like, you know, so that's why I threw it away. So you know it took you maybe, like, a year or two to finally get acclimated mm-hmm. to the place where, like, okay, I can still eat. Now, now I'm used to seeing this type of drink. Right. Like, that's one. How was it coming in our environment from Ghana? Seeing poop all over the place, dogs, you know, or like, how was it? Nah, but I can't lie. Like, you see, Ghana was like the same through, like the trenches in Ghana. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so. Oh, my too. <laughs> it was a third, it's a third world country, right? Yeah, third world country. Yeah, yeah. Country, so obviously you went through trouble. Nah, in fact, yeah. yeah. Well, it was more so the, um, the life outside of, yeah, I'm living in this when you go outside, the gangs, the shootings, the people you getting jumped and all that from where we come from. And then, it was very dangerous living in New York at that time because it's like you couldn't go anywhere out your comfort zone except that you would be picked on. That's a fact, yo. I remember, yo, there was a point in time, like, yo, back in the days, like, yo, any hood you went to, you wasn't safe. <laughs> that was back in the days when they was grinning. I'm talking about if you make eye contact with somebody... And you don't look away, like, you know, like, they, it's like, they still like, oh, like, yo, who is this? Like, yo, like, you know? So, like, it's like, if you make eye contact with somebody, if you don't want no smoke, no problems, look away. Like, that's, you know, for real. Cause, like, yo, it was very intimidating back in the days. Like, you know, so you really had to be on point when you go to certain places. Like, you know, so. Do you remember one time I took this out? Where's the It was when you go to one bus. Somebody in the building. That's so, against my computer. It's like, so, so. <laughs> I was like, uh, I, I seen a little bit. It was like, do you want to fight? It's like, what's up? I'm here. Like, mm-hmm. what, did you, what did you want to do? Nah, yeah, 100. You're so right you right. couldn't show no sign of weakness, no fear, no none of that. You had to come with it. You know what I'm saying? Growing up. If you show any type of fear or weakness, oh, it's over for you. They're going to take advantage of you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> At that time, I'm like, yo, bro. I don't want no problems. We out of our, we out of our little comfort zone. We ain't never blocked. I'm like, yo, bro, this he was still with the smoke. <laughs> nah, in fact, yeah, bro. Sometimes you got to be smart. You got to read the room, like you know, see the environment where you at. You know what I'm saying you gotta, you gotta be smart. I, honestly, I'm gonna do a whole separate little time, man. I'm gonna now get into the time you start. Like, um, I just started playing basketball before me. Uh, you went to Keith. Keith Kent. Shout out to Keith. Coach K. <laughs> mm-hmm. so I just remember you picked up so quick in basketball. As if you were destined to do it. It took me a while for me to um, get acclimated to basketball, but you learned very quick mm-hmm. and whatever. Talk to us, your process, how you started. I got what you. I got you. Start? Yeah, so uh, we're going to go back to remember when I was in Ghana. I told you. Saga was my number one sport. That was like my number one love. Right. Like, you know, I remember you like playing soccer with all my brothers in the garden. Like, you know, um, and then fast forward coming to New York. I remember the very first day, like, you know, when I was in New York, mm-hmm. came to the Bronx, building 10, River Park Tower, the rough part of town. You heard? That's what it stands for, RPT. But I remember the very first day, like, it was yesterday, pretty much. So I remember y'all was in school when I arrived. Like, you know, I'm in the living room and I'm watching TV. As I'm watching TV, the NBA game is on, right? Guess who was the first player I watched? Allen Iverson. So Allen Iverson was the very first NBA player I watched. Like, you know, so I remember watching the game. Like, you know, Iverson, he had the tattoos. He had his cornrows. Like, you know, box braids, the sleeve. I'm like, yo, who this dude? And I just remember, like, it's just, like, something just, he, he, he was standing out, like, you know, like, out of everybody. Okay. And I'm like, yo, this dude is nice. I'm like, yo, who is this? And then it was also my first time, like, you know, seeing the sport. I'm like, yo, this this joint, it look cool. Like, I want to try it. Then the very next game after that 
was the Lakers playing. I yeah. forgot who they was playing, but it was Kobe. Yeah. This was a time where Kobe with the throw, yeah. number eight. You know what I'm saying? So I remember watching him. I'm like, oh, like for some reason I'm watching AI was nice to me, but for some reason, I don't know. It was just something about Kobe, like just his swag, his style, like the pro number eight was my favorite number too. So I was like, yo, something, I don't know. I just gravitated towards like, you know, Kobe, like I was inspired, like, you know what I'm saying? So that was the reason why, like, you know, like I was interested in basketball. So I remember I was like, yo. I want to try this as soon as possible. Like, you know, so I remember, I, don't, I forgot when it was. It may have maybe been a few days from there. Like, you know, I went outside and you feel me? I went to the courts and that's how I picked up on basketball. That's how I discovered basketball. Okay. So now that you discovered basketball, you're learning basketball. Mm-hmm. Now, you got the problem is better than all of us. And way faster than us. And. I just remember you winning competition. Think part of winning winning competition. It was a thing that we were in the hood. Well, keep you to go to the hood. You remember people by eight. You were number one. Yeah, I was number one. In my age group, I was like uh, seven. Like, they were six. Sorry, number six or five. There was a couple of people. And then, like, me, eight, 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 round. There was a couple of people ahead of me. In it. And, but that's when I was, like, started getting better. So now you're playing back in the hood. Mm-hmm. And fast forward, you now is about to go to high school. At the time, now I'm solidified. I'm in Kennedy High School. So you go to Kennedy now. I was experimenting. Oh, yeah. Shout out, hold on, wait. Shout out to the late, great Dick Matthews. Um, my condolences to him and his family. I was, I definitely always wanted to see that. Kennedy did. So I'm gonna show them Kennedy when I, when, I, when I get back to the state from college. Um, he was a great coach. We learned so much. Like many of his practices stuck with us. They played basketball. He was very disciplined. So disciplined. To this day, like many teams loved me and revered me because of my ability to box out. That's a lot part to the box out. But that's, that's something that always stuck stuck with me from Kennedy. Translated to me outside, even in the pros, I'm boxing out. People don't box out. So I mean, people get dunked on and get put back on. Okay, now you go to Kennedy. What made you go to Kennedy? And then that's where the luxurious career of um, number one in the city, Bosch, got game started. Yeah, all right. So basically, um, our older brother, we had an older brother at the time, Yassine. Like, you know, so he was the first one to go to Kennedy High School. You know, and after him, it was you. You kind of like, you know, follow his footsteps a little bit. So Yassine actually used to play basketball and he played for Kennedy High School mm-hmm. under Coach Mathis, one of the greatest coaches ever, you know, but um, so he played like, you know, under Coach Mathis. Mm-hmm. But when he played, he didn't really get a chance to showcase his talent as much. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like around that time, it was very competitive. You had a lot of players like, you know, and sometimes you just got to be at the right place at the right time. You got to be in the right situation, right position. And remember how Coach Math is like Kennedy days, yo, they used to have over 40 players on the team. Like, yo, every time when we travel, yo, we was probably like the deepest team every time. But like, it you know? Us. Shout out to him though, because he gave everybody opportunity. That's true. Every other team, they only had like 20 players on the roster, you know. So shout out to him for that. But um, yeah, so fast forward, you go to Kennedy, and I remember coming to the games, like, you know, like uh when you were playing varsity. Yes. And I'm, every, every time I came to the game, like the games was like super live. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it was competition. Like, you know, and I kind of follow your footsteps a little bit. Like, you know, so when you went there, I got, the, when I arrived at Kennedy, it was just like, it was dope. Cause like, you know, you had like players coming from everywhere, bro. Like, you know, everybody wanted to make the team. Like, you know, uh, it used to be like 30 people in practice. Like, you know, and, Coach Mathis, he gave everybody opportunity pretty much. Like, you know, but when I came, it's like I was on a mission. Like, I had a goal. I was like, all right, cool. I'm coming here. I'm trying to play varsity. So I played varsity my first year coming out of uh, middle school. Like, you know, so it's like I had a mission. Like, you know, um, I just always had that in me. Like, you know, like being competitive. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to just keep climbing. I got to get my name up. Like, you know, so. Well, at that time, I already had a name for myself a lot. I'm. Um, 
people started, you started making a name. So I respect you. Start, you started, they start knowing you for that. that they's over my, I'm a little brother. Now you started building your name. That's far shit. That's good. <laughs> so, um, after we graduate, um, you take off. On a lot. Like now, you get a 40 point games. The whole city, even a little before that, uh, he started getting well recognized. But when we left, when God, the city just now literally filed down to you, like you had like a similar rank inside the Bronx, like how Shamari Ponds had in Brooklyn. How uh, they probably had in Brooklyn and everything on New York. Kind of had that too. Mm-hmm. Your top. Well, as you as you know, like you know, sometimes I remember. I'm gonna just go back, right? I'm gonna walk you up, like you know, from freshman year. Mm-hmm. So I remember when I came, like I'm playing varsity, like you know, uh, Face was on the team at the time, like you know, shout out to Face, like you know, he's a point guard. He just transferred from Bishop Lachlan. And then we had, uh, Jose, shout out to Jose too. We had a good team. Like, you know, we had you, like, uh, we had a few good players pretty much. So I remember me coming in, right? It's like I had to work my way up. Like nothing was going to be handed to me. So I had to work my way up. I remember it was games where I didn't play. I remember coach Matthews was like, yo, you have to just watch and like, you know, get experience. So I used to be like, wait, what you mean get experience? Like I'm better than these players. Like, you know, that's how I felt. Yeah. You know, but looking, sure. yeah, but looking back to it though, like, you know, I appreciate it though, because it humbled me, like, you know, so, and it just forced me to like, just work harder pretty much. So I remember, you know, being a hooper, right. And a basketball player is different. You could be a basketball player, but being a hooper, you always want to figure it out. So I remember like, you know, it was times where like, I wasn't really getting that much minutes. So you got to figure it out. Like, you know, so I started catching rebounds. I start playing defense, just doing the little things like, you know, to stay in the game. So Coach Mathis saw that and he, he saw my work ethic and he was like, no, this guy deserves to play. And then he started playing me. Slowly and slowly, I just started getting better and better and better and better. So now we go to sophomore sophomore season. So now I'm kind of like familiar already, like, you know, with the league, PSAL. So now we go into, we go into a sophomore year. I come out, I'm killing now. You feel me? So now is I'm starting to make a name for myself a little bit. Like, you know, we done played in BOB a few tournaments, like, yeah. you know, before the season started. Kind of making a name for myself now a little bit. At that time, I think I played in uh Gauchos. I played with Taekwon Givens. Yeah. Shout out to Taekwon Givens too. Um I remember uh playing with them in the King James tournament. That was like my first AU trip, like, you know, right. going away. Like, you know, um, but anyways, let me fast forward now. So now when y'all leave in basketball, right, you always got to wait your turn. Like, you know, <laughs> you always got to play your role and you got to wait your turn. Like, yes. you know, opportunities, it come and go, yeah. you know. So when y'all left, it was the perfect time for me to like, you know, take over pretty much. Everybody done left. Like, you know, I was like basically like the only one, yeah. you know, we had Terry Larry at the time when he was a sophomore, right? But then he ended up transferring, like, you know, so it was just me. So pretty much like, you know, junior. Now I already done played AU, like, you know, I'm with playing with New Heights. Like, you know, I already started, like, you know, building my name up. I started getting a few offers, like, you know, but all my offers was from like mid-major and like, you know, low division one school. You feel me? So junior year. So now I'm like, oh, the ball is in my court, ball is in my hand. So like now I'm just taking over. So now I'm looking at the rankings and I'm like, all right, cool. So who the top dog in New York? You feel me? Like, so now I'm really like starting to do my homework. Like, wait, hold up. Like, who this? Why everybody keep talking about this dude? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, nah, I need to like, you feel me? Like keep working up. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I started putting in work and then obviously... I started being on the news every week. They used to call me Mr. Bronx 12. Mr. Bronx 12. I got that. Mr. Bronx 12. 
So I was always on the news. I made a name for myself in the Bronx. Like, you know, I was solidified in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. But remind you, you know, we still got Brooklyn, Staten Island, Queens, all these other places. Right? Prove yourself. You know, so now you got to prove yourself to the whole city. You know what I'm saying? And I remember, um, oh yeah, by the way, I was the leader scorer that year too in mm -hmm. PCL. I took both scoring titles. I took the most points per game mm -hmm. and total points. Like, you know, um, I picked up the plats at Madison Square Garden. But anyways, so yeah, so like now it's like, all right, cool. So I remember there was this game one time, right? Because around that time, Isaiah Whitehead was like, Talk of the city at the time. Yeah. Like, you know, he was kind of following, like, you know, Stephon Marbury, uh, Lance Stevenson, Sebastian Telfair. So he was kind of like following their path. Like, they all from, you know, uh, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Like, you know, um, what's the name of where they from again? Lincoln? I mean, Coney Island. Coney Island. Like, you know, so he kind of like, and with him, like, he kind of had, like, you know, people behind him. Yes. Like, you know, like, then. Yeah, he had people backing him. Like, you know, he had big support system. Like, you know, uh, me, I ain't really had that. Like, you know, but shout out to Coach Cato because, like, he taught us a lot growing up. He taught everybody in our neighborhood how to hoop, how to play basketball. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was very, like, consistent going to yes. him every day. Like, you know, working on my game. Like, you know, yes. so I'm very grateful for that. Shout out to Coach K. But, um, so anyway, there was this infamous game that kind of got me on the map. Like, you know, that people don't know about. So this infamous game was the game when I played against Isaiah Whitehead in Gaucho. in Gaucho. Infamous night, like, you know, when I got my name up, like when I just solidified myself in the city. Mm -hmm. So what people don't know is that same day. Yeah. That was my third. That was that was that was my third game. By the way, I had played two previous games before that in the morning. Okay. So we had a tournament called ISA. Ooh, that was, a that was my favorite tournament. tournament at the time. In Ooh, the I missed like, you know? So I remember at that tournament, like you know, um, a few players like didn't show up. Like that was mm -hmm. originally on our team. Facts. So that basically opened up the doors for me to like you know to kill like you know and. I basically like took up on that opportunity and I destroyed like, you know, pretty much both games, both games. I had 30 points back to back. I was playing with a uh, Scoochie. Shout out to Scoochie Smith, too. He was point guard. He was throwing me alley oops, whatever. So I was kind of already warmed up going into that third game. Yeah. Like, you know, remember ISA games used to be early, like, you know, like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, whatever. So now let me fast forward now. So the game, the third game, the infamous game was around, I think, seven or eight o'clock, right? So it was round ball. That was the name of the tournament. Gauchos. So we get to the game now, right? We arrive. Um, it's me on my team. It was uh me, Chris McCullen. Chris McCullen was ranked at the time in the nation. He was like top ten in the nation at the time, you know. So it was me, Chris McCullen, a few cats, like, you know, but our team, we had a lot of no names. Like, people wasn't really known yet. We wasn't solidified. Nobody really knew us. But, you know, we was the underdogs, pretty much. And um, we was playing against Isaiah Whitehead, yes. uh, Desi Rodriguez. We was playing against, like, a lot of top names, like, you know, in the city. They had a bomb squad, pretty much, like, mm -hmm. you know. And so during that game, right, when I arrived, uh, a few of my teammates, whatever, Remember Taekwon giving shout outs to Taekwon, yeah. um, Tyler Wilson, Josh, Scoochie, all these dudes. They're like, yo. So Tyler was like, y'all heard you was killing that. I say, you had 30 back to back. And I'm like, yeah. So he's like, yo, he basically telling, he's like, yo, kill these niggas, da da da, whatever. So, um, game started, right? Mm -hmm. And first tip of the ball, whatever, I get the ball, whatever, I go score coast to coast. Like, I'm talking about, I was scoring, like, back to back. Like, I don't even think I missed, to be honest, during that, that, that first half 40 that game. In that first half, I was going crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? So now, let me fast forward to third quarter now. Now is the beginning of the third quarter, right? So now, like, you know, Isaiah Whitehead and a few players, my son Larry, shout out to Larry too. So they like, yo. Who this dude right here? Like Isaiah right, right here was like, yo, who is this dude? He's like, yo, this dude killing, like da da da, whatever, you know. He ain't know me, obviously, like you know. But I remember I'm at the free throw line and I hear them talking about me, whatever. 
So I shot it out. I was like, yo, I'm Bashi Ahmed, nigga. Da, da, da. Oh, snap. Excuse my name. I was like, I'm Bashi Ahmed, nigga. You feel me? And then that's when he was like, he's like, what? He's like, who are you? He's like, I've never heard of you. Da, 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 da. <laughs> this shit, you feel me? This shit. And that's when I was like, well, now you know. <clears throat> Bashi Ahmed, you heard? <laughs> and then that's when, um, I remember he was like, I bet. Oh, and then Larry was like, oh, he feeling himself now. Like, da, 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 da. You <laughs> So now Whitehead was like, I bet. He's like, say no more. He's like, all right, so start from now on. I'll guard you. You guard me. That's how we going to do it for the rest of the game. So I'm guessing, like, you know, while we was going back and forth, like, you know, Taekwon, Tyler, and they already peeped that. Like, you know, we... Yeah, you know, Gloria, Tyler, yeah right so they already peeped that. Like, yeah. you know, so now I get the ball now. They inbound the ball. I get the ball. Whitehead is guarding me. He's picking me up 94 feet. Like, you feel me? So... Now everybody start hyping it up like yeah. If you not from New York, you feel me? Like when you hear that, oh yeah, yeah you gotta crazy. drive one him on the island. That means one on one. You feel me? So I'm like, Miami, so I'm like, this nigga picking me up ninety four feet. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm about to cook this nigga. You feel me? <laughs> so anyway, fast forward, like you know. I bring up the ball. I mm-hmm. pass, you know, half court. He's guarding me, whatever. First move, I dropped him, but I kind of lost the ball. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I fumbled it. So they, you know, they stole the ball and they scored. Mm-hmm. So, second possession, I get the ball. Now I come down court. From that point on, I started cooking throughout mm-hmm. the whole game. Don't get me wrong. Whitehead was cooking too. He was killing. I'm not going to lie. But I wasn't. All my points was on him, yeah. pretty much. Mm-hmm. Like you know, um, I remember. Well, how about when you guarded him that game? Yeah, when I guarded him, he wasn't. He wasn't really. I mean, I fouled him once. Like yeah. he went to the line, but honestly, he wasn't really strong like that when I guarded him. But all my points was on him, pretty yeah. much. So that game is the game that basically solidified me because it was versus the top player in the city at the time, Isaiah Whitehead, and he was killing everybody. To be honest, and nobody ever saw him like you know get killed. I'm not going to say he got killed, but nobody saw anybody get the best of him at the time, you know? So that was the game that kind of like, yes. you know, put me, like, you know, on a tie. The game right, Bruce. Like, every time he's like, going back, so y'all always go back and forth. Some games he had. So I'm not going to lie. Like, yo, we had a few rivalries. Like, we had a lot of rivalries. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you feel me? So I just remember, like, you know, just going at him, like, different tournaments. Like some games he had the best, like he had the best of me. Some games I had the best of him. Mm-hmm. And I just remember like, yo, like we just had this ongoing rivalry and I hated this dude. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, he hated you like, too. The he hated me too. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? But, um, and pretty much like it was just very competitive every time when we played against each other and everybody used to come out with a city to watch because we used to talk of the city. That, was, that was the time. Yo, who mm-hmm. better? What happened? And then, that's what everybody was talking about. and then they ranked me number one. I became number one in the city. Like, you know, and so everybody like, wait, hold up. How the hell he number one in the city when Isaiah Whitehead is ranked in the nation <laughs> and by sheer not ranked in the nation. So now they like, yo, what the hell? That don't even add up. Like, you know, they was like, yo, Whitehead, he killed all over. He killed different states. Da, da, da. I actually built in New York. Like, you know, so it was like this big controversy, this, like, talks about us. Like, you know, it's crazy. So I had fans on my side that was riding for me, and then he had his own fans. Like, you know, mm. so it was crazy. Yeah, but that was crazy because I just remember even outside, yeah, I finished high school. Yeah, I even played against each other in the ABA league. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I get overseas professional. I'm playing in uh, Croatia. I'm playing in the ABA league. It's known as the Alba League. So these are, like, um, AGI like, you know, countries, like, you know, all the countries that's surrounded by the Adriatic Sea. So, like, Croatia, uh, Bosnia, Slovenia, like, you know, all those countries pretty much. So, he's playing with a, a Montenegro team at the time, like, you know, and we played against each other. And it's funny, this is, like, years after, maybe, like, yeah. <laughs> like eight, eight, seven years, like, you know, later, <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. And even at the game, like, you know, me and him, like, we didn't really interact. Like, we didn't talk. <laughs> I remember, like, before the game, during warm-ups, like, you know, I'm watching him warm up. He's watching me warm up, too. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, but we didn't have no conversation, interaction or nothing. Like, you know, it's like, 
it was still competitive with us. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> you feel me? So after the game, I remember after the game, they beat us. Like, you know, but none of us got the best of each other. Like, we yeah. both had like eight points or something like that, you know. Um, and I remember we shook hands at the end and that was it. Like, yo, it's good. That's it. Simple. And at the time, too, like, Back in the days, like, we was so competitive. Like, you know, we wanted to be the best. So it's like, we ain't want to make friends. You know, yeah. nowadays, like, you know, if you look at today's NBA, everybody want to be friends. That's, that's our problem with the game. It's not competitive no more. That's why I don't be NBA. I don't know who it was. Bro, I don't watch. It's a lot sport out there. It's like everybody just... <laughs> sex. Everybody just... Playing, mm-hmm. giving this person respect, no defense. Or not. I can't mm-hmm. watch that. I only watch play when they're talking playoffs and everything. Like, I don't watch that until it comes to like the mm-hmm. second round playoffs. That's when they start to get a little deeper and a little more physicality. Mm-hmm. Nah, for sure. More entertaining. Like, you more know. entertaining. Yeah. Well, I'm the like, you had a luxurious high school run career. You have to like one prep school. Now you go. You you committed to St. John's and everything like that. You had a great year in St. John's. Anyone who says elsewhere is not grateful and is lying. It's got a great two seasons. Talk to us about your time in St. John's playing Division One. You were that was which was one of your dream schools. I'm the I bless you with that, and you was blessed to go overseas. But mm-hmm. like, um, All right, so before St. John's. I'm going to go ahead and talk about Juco. Okay. Like, you know, because I had Ooh, to, I forgot about the year. So I had to take a different journey pretty much. Yeah. So back in high school and stuff, you had to, you know, uh, you had to reach a certain GPA in order for you to play division one, you know, and I didn't reach that GPA pretty much. My grades was, was bad, was terrible. You know, it was just basketball, basketball, basketball. Mm. So, um, so I remember like, you know, it was that one summer, like when I, f- find out that I had to go Juco and I just remember like yo like I was like stressed I was going through it like you know but I remember during that time you helped me get through it like you know because you obviously experienced that before like you know you kind of took the same path like you know um, you after high school you went to Juco for the same reasons like you know you feel me you wouldn't you you didn't, you didn't qualify for division one so you had to go Juco so I remember you kind of helped me with that whole process, you know, yes. you know what I mean, you kind of eased the pain a little bit. So I never thank you for that. I'm grateful for that, too. Like, you know what I'm saying? But um, so I remember getting to Juco, like, you know, at, in high school, my biggest offers was uh West Virginia, Kansas State. I took a visit to West Virginia, you know, um, and they was trying to get me qualified and work out. So I ended up going Juco. But anyway, fast forward, I'm in Juco now. I'm cooking, like, you know, first two years, whatever. I was All-American both years. Like, you know, my second year, I was, like, number one, number two in the nation. I had every school in the nation. I had Rick Pitino, uh, Coach Cronin. I had every coach coming to watch me play in person. Not assistant coaches, head coaches coming to watch me play in person. Mm -hmm. And then um, I even had NBA scouts coming to watch me. I remember Chicago Bulls, like, you know, came to watch me at the time. Okay, so now, like, you know, season is over. I won, you know, play of the year, like, you know, in my conference. And then uh, we lost, like, you know, semifinals in the tournament. So I remember um, when I got the uh, St. John, like, you know, uh, I made the decision to go to St. John because I've always been a fan of St. John's. I remember when I was younger going to watch, like, St. John's games and stuff um, at Madison Square Garden, like, you know, playing against Fordham Road. Like, so I remember these games, like, you know, Mo Hawk, this was there. Um, and I always been a fan, like, you know, Ron Artest played there. A lot of greats, like, you know, played over there pretty much. And red always been my favorite color, you know? And then also, um, when I went to Kansas, like, you know, it was a huge transition and like adjustment that I had to make, like, you know, going from New York to the other side of the world, like almost like going to Kansas. It was like, it was nothing there, like, you know? So it was a huge transition. So I was like, yo, I kind of got homesick a little bit. And I was like, yo, I kind of want to come home a little bit too. And then also I felt like it would have been a perfect story because St. John's at the time was like kind of like down. Like, you know, so I kind of wanted to put them back on the map. I felt like it would have been a good story. Like, oh, a kid from New York coming back, mm-hmm. put his, you know, his team on the map. Like, mm-hmm. you know, so that's kind of why I made my decision to go there, you know, um, and then also, I just wanted to put on for my city, 
And I also wanted my family to be able to support me, like, you know, play in front of my family. So that's the reason why I made those decisions pretty much, you know. And then also, you know, we had a great coaching staff. Like, you know, we had uh, Chris Mullen, like, shout out to him, Mitch Richardson, like, you know, Greg, Coach Matt, who quoted me. So, and they, they made me feel welcome. Like, you know, I was going there, like, way before I committed. Like, you know, they were showing me love. Like, you know, I could use the gym anytime I want. So, like, they basically made me feel comfortable. So, that's why I made my decision to go there. So, now you went there. I'm going to love Matter of fact, to be continued, subscribe, like, World of Night Podcast. It's your boy, for sure. Yeah, that's his time, sure. BX. I'm the BX. That's what I was inside every time he scored. He threw up the X straight up. Yeah. Where we come from? You hear me? From, from, from New York? To overseas, I'm still throwing it up. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? South course of people up. Jump to her. Hey, why? This one, we probably really bugging. You already hear that. Nah, don't get your, don't get your funny up. Mm-hmm. Get your Dean up. You hear me? Don't go part two, inshallah. We have to cut a show. We have to go break our fast. We're about to travel to Medina. See the process. So, like, inshallah. Stay tuned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Number one in the city, Mr. Baj, but isn't it? Inshallah, stay tuned. Thank you for the opportunity. Very grateful. Looking forward to part two.